Well, good morning. Good afternoon. God bless you, Pastor David Train. I'm coming into your heart, thanking you for allowing me in in order that I might share some of the truths from the word of the Lord that God has placed in my heart concerning the signs of the times. This message, as I said, I believe it's prophetic for where we're at, even though there's a lot of content to it. I believe that when we're done, you're going to be strengthened in your faith. You're going to be encouraged to go through whatever the enemy might try to set up in your life in this time in which we live. Now, as we continue to go on, I also want to encourage you to not just take these as another teaching, as I've been saying. I want you to take it as the word of the Lord. And as we have been unfolding these things, we're going to get into, quote unquote, what I'm look, referring to as the nitty gritty. Remember those terms we used to use, the nitty gritty of what God wants, the, 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 the focal point of what God wants to say during these next probably three or four teachings. Now, um, in the last days, as we began talking about the church last week, you know, or I should say last time, you know, in these last days, we must remain focused on the mission at hand. And the mission for the church is always winning souls. I quote something so often that I heard an apostle of the faith say uh, probably 30, 35 years ago now, uh, T.L. Osborne, um, it was at a pastor's conference in New Jersey where he said, you know, preach the gospel, use words only if necessary. You know, and I, 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 I understood what he said, but it took me a long time to wrap my heart around what he actually meant. And when it says use words only when necessary, it doesn't mean don't use words. Because how can they hear without a preacher? But what it, what it was is we've got to place emphasis on our life and on our lifestyle, especially when we say that we are members of the church and a church. Because I don't care what church you're a part of. I don't care what church, you know, or, or, or who is your pastor. I know that when somebody knows that you're in a quote unquote church, that they're associating that entire congregation with how you act. Therefore, you got to act right at all, the, at all times. And so in these last days, we must remain focused on the mission at hand, which is winning souls. And we must have the same mentality that's revealed in the book of Jude, chapter 1 and verse 9. When Michael, the archangel, was fighting over the body of Moses, he placed the argument in the hands of the Lord. And instead of fighting back and forth, like a lot of times people do in the church, Michael simply told Satan, the Lord rebuke you. And going back to my statement about preachers taking their eyes off the Lord and trying to build a ministry instead of Christ's church, I want to be clear that this is not directed at any specific preacher. I said it the last time and I say it again. And if the truth would be told, if someone is preaching and living the word of God, they will embrace what I'm actually saying. And this is shared to prepare the heart of the sheep. So you are ready to meet the great shepherd when he appears. Now, remember what the Bible said, you know, as we read in 2 Peter chapter 3 about scoffers? It said, knowing this in verse 3, that first, scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts. Now, I stated that these scoffers are not common people who are trying to discredit the word of God. In the Greek, they are imposters or false prophets, and that's who I'm calling out. Because I believe that what the world has experienced over the past decade, and specifically since we battled COVID-19 uh, since 2020, it has shaken the church, especially the leadership of the church. And while some have fallen away from Christ, others have developed a non-caring attitude towards the things of God while invoking his name. And they have been shaken out of the quote-unquote the tree that they were in. And now they're being revealed for who they are. Now, in this last day, God is not going to allow things to continue without stern warnings. It's not that they're not going to uh, continue. It's not that they're going to stop. But God is going to continue to give stern warnings. And therefore, the people who are committing these ungodly acts are going to be without excuse when they stand before him. And the irony is, although people know these things are coming, 
and they know the wrath that's stored up for those who commit such things, most of them will continue down that same path of destruction, giving heed to uh, the God of mammon and the God of authority and power. Yet God is shaking the world. And at the same time, he's shaking his church as judgment has begun in the house of God. And as the book of 1 Peter chapter 4 says, the time has come for the judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? You see, no one knows what the shaking of the earth and the shaking of the church is going to look like as God carries out his judgment. However, the only thing that will be left standing of the church are the people, not necessarily the buildings, the people who have anchored their lives and their hearts to Christ Jesus. See, in Hebrews chapter 12, the New Living Translation, in verse 26, it says, when God spoke from Mount Sinai, and that's when he spoke to Moses, it says his voice shook the earth. But now he makes another promise. Once again, I will shake not only the earth, but the heavens also. And this means that all of creation, verse 27, will be shaken and removed so that only unshakable things will remain. My question becomes, are you shakable? Is your faith firmly anchored to the Lord Jesus Christ? You see, the corporate church has been going through a shaking and the intensity has increased since 2020. And I noticed that many preachers have taken to manipulation and at times intimidation embarrassment instead of trusting Christ to build his church through them. You see, my wife and I, we were reassigned prior to the pandemic, even though it had started, no one knew about it. And to be honest, I'm not even certain how I would have reacted. But I do know this, that during the 30 plus years of ministry, we never manipulated or intimidated anyone. And now I believe that we would have stayed the course no matter what would have happened because we didn't do it for money. We didn't do it for a salary, even though it would have been great to have gotten paid. We did it because of the call that's on our lives. And through COVID, my friend, God has shaken that which can be shaken. And when it's all over, the only thing that will remain is what cannot be shaken. And the same is true with the last part of that scripture, as God has now shaken the heavens also, like no other time in history. Jesus said again, referencing Matthew 24, that in the last days, many would come in his name and many false prophets would arise. And COVID had shaken loose those prophets and, have become, and they have become bolder in deceiving the people of God. And using promises of scripture taken out of context and falsifying words that they deem as being prophetic. The spirit of deception has infiltrated the church. And specifically, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, for false prophets and false uh, teachers and messiahs will rise up and perform great signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even God's chosen ones. And then he says, see, I've warned you about this ahead of time. See, Jesus knew that this was coming. He knew that it was going to find a lodging place in the earth after he gave up the ghost on Calvary's cross. And the thing is, as he says here, they, that these false messiahs and false prophets are going to rise and perform great signs and wonders so as to deceive. When somebody deceives another, they actually appeal to their senses. They gain that person's confidence. And because the person being deceived has no root in God, they fall into the trap of the enemy. And you must understand that this does not mean that the person being deceived is not a child of God. It does not mean that the person being deceived will not be saved. It means that through their ignorance, they've allowed a, sp a spirit of deception to gain the upper hand. And if they're not careful, they will be led astray. However, the person causing the deception will be dealt with as they neglect to realize that these are God's people. And God will always defend his people.
In the Greek, the word deceive means to cause to wander, to lead astray, to mislead, and get it, and to cause somebody to form a wrong judgment. It, that is the goal of the false prophets or the false messiah. You see, at the same time as churches are trying to hang on to everything that would keep them afloat, there has come a great falling away. And the mistake that people who are still, quote unquote, going to church, the mistake that they're making is in thinking that the falling away is reflective of people who have chosen not to return to the physical building because of COVID yet. And if they're not careful, they're going to run those same people that, would, that are thinking about going back to that church. They're going to run them away and they're not even going to go to that church. You see, the falling away is revealed as people turning away, get it, from Christ, not necessarily a local church assembly. And the New Living Translation reveals that this falling away is a rebellion against God. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, don't be fooled by what they say, for that day will not come until there is a great rebellion against God, and the man of lawlessness is revealed the one who brings destruction. That's verse three. Now, part of the manipulation and intimidation since the pandemic has been to shame God's people in returning to in-person services as COVID has emptied many churches and pastors struggle to pay their salaries, mortgages, and keep the ministry going. And I believe in meeting as the word of the Lord declares, don't give up the assembling of yourselves together with other believers. I believe in meeting together. But we must also be certain that guilt and shame is not part of the process used to get people into a church. And because some people have chosen to wait until COVID is no longer a threat before they consider returning to in-person services, they are spoken of as if they're the Antichrist and have turned their backs on God. And that is not the case. And unless people return to in-person church services willingly, all you have is a body and the earthly fulfillment of Jesus' statement when he said, these people draw near me with their presence or their lips, but their hearts are, not far, are, are far from me. You see, God still wants the hearts of his people and not a sacrifice that he never called for, as Matthew chapter 15 and 8 states. Therefore, some ministers around the nation, they've allowed fear to dictate their actions in their words. And instead of adjusting the ministry to what the current times call for, they seek to build using new wine in old wine skins, whereas the skin is going to bust and both the wine and the wine skin will be useless. Now, the day we live in will have both negative and positive qualities of the church on display. As preachers prof and people, for that matter, prophesy peace, prosperity, and blessing, of those, these will be available for the people of God. They will also begin as a spiritual entity and not necessarily as world peace, financial prosperity, or tangible blessings that begin with the salvation of their souls. They prophesy peace as an absence of problems or conflict. They prophesy prosperity as money or other material things. They prophesy blessings as a never-ending stream of favorable circumstances. And my friends, this is not necessarily true. As preachers manipulate God's people into sowing excessive amounts of money for a blessing that is already promised, you must be wise and mature enough to know that God has not chosen you to fix all the problems in his church. Therefore, we must know how to receive the word without falling for the tricks that line the pockets of the false prophets. And again, the gospel is given free of charge. God's blessings are available to everyone. And the rain falls even on the unjust because of God's mercy. In 1 Corinthians 9 and 18, Paul said that he preached the gospel free of charge. And although resources are needed to provide for the ministry, for the local assembly, the people of God are not obligated to try to fix all the problems of the world and the problems in Christ's church. And again, it's Christ's church. And he's going to ensure that each ministry he called will survive the shaking 
that has begun. For those who have followed my teachings over the years in opposition to many prophetic words that were spoken, you've heard me say that as a whole, things will not get better. And according to scripture, things will get worse and worse. However, for the people of God, God is going to give you a spirit of faith that's not going to flinch during times of adversity. You see, I'm not a prophet of doom and gloom. I don't consider myself a prophet at all. But someone who believes that God, what God said is going to happen over what men wish would happen as they prophesy out of their own imaginations. As Ezekiel chapter 13 and verse 2 stated, I'm sending out God's warning about the deception that has been unleashed on the earth and will intensify as the days unfold. That's what I'm trying to do here. So with that, we're going to stop this teaching. This is part four. We're going to see you in part five as we begin to look at signs from the book of Revelations. Signs from the book of Revelations. I will see you on the other side. God bless you.